We've taken off the nut on this side, and it's similar to the other side. What we're going to do is we're going to drive this axle out the other side. You can use any blunt object, like a punch or whatever. I just use a screwdriver. After you drive the axle out, you notice that the rear end will drop down. Now you can see that this assembly is loose. If you're going to pull this entire assembly out, uh, because of the chain tensioner, or if you can't get the chain off the top, sometimes it's a lot easier to just remove the brake caliper. All right, we're going to remove this brake caliper now. Again, we're looking at the end of this wire. It's got a little aluminum cap, which you could just pull off. Sometimes they're more difficult than others, but it's basically meant to keep the wires together. So if they fray, they'll uh, stay assembled. So we loosen the nut. We're loosening these screws, which hold the brake caliper in. And your brake caliper is now loose. Now you've got a pretty good view of the rear assembly. Now there's a couple ways to do this to get this chain off. You can sometimes lift it off the motor or you can lift the wheel up high enough into the wheel well sometimes to get it out. To do that though, we have to get this axle all the way out and get this sleeve out. This last sleeve is in here which is helping hold this against the strut. And again, notice that these washers are different sizes. So when you're dealing with these washers, be sure that you put the right ones where they belong. There's the inside. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a, just a little pick tool to get the chain loose. What we want to do is we want to get the chain off of the gear. So we need to move it off to the side to get it over the brake caliper. Sometimes the chain is difficult to get off of this gear. We can get it over this area. We can get it off this side here, but once we try to get it over the disc, there's a couple ways to do it. One way is it should have some free slack in here. And we've got it over the first gear, but sometimes it's difficult to get it over the brake caliper. You just simply don't have enough chain room. There's two different ways to do it. You can try to slip it off on the inside, off the tensioner, or for me, I just lifted the chain off of the motor, off the gear, and we can just drop it down. And that way the entire wheel assembly will now come out. Now we're looking at the unit with the wheel completely out, and we can see the chain tensioner hanging down here. This chain tensioner is probably going to be the biggest problem for you reassembling these, and we're going to show you how to deal with this chain tensioner. Also, if you needed to replace this or if you have bearing issues, you can replace the bearings here by just removing this wheel. Uh, the bearing assembly is right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this uh, tensioner up and we're going to push it up out of the way, up on the inside, and we're going to hold it back in place as we put the wheel back in. Now you see the chain tensioner is hanging all the way down here. And what we need to do is have the chain tensioner in this area. And because it has a lot of tension on it, because that's what its job is to do, is to keep a lot of tension, we have to first push it up, and then we're going to try to pin it back out of the way. And you can see now that it, I'm hold, holding it manually back out of the way. But what we need to do is keep it out of the way while we put the chain on, and then we'll release it. We can also come in from the side, and we can take a screwdriver, and we can try to pin it back out of the way. but we definitely want to get it out of the way and we want to hold it out of the way. A screwdriver put in here off, often works. Unless you've got a, a friend to help you, what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of wood in here to hold the screwdriver in place. Now the chain tensioner is out of the way and it'll be quite easy to put the chain and the wheel back on. What we're going to do is now is we're going to take the chain and we're going to lay it into the slot, not on the chain, we're going to lay it into the low slot. Now we're going to push it back where the tire belongs, up underneath. Now there's a couple ways to do this, but what we need to do is hook this chain, and you can grab it with your finger and push it up inside, and grab it from the inside. Now that we've lifted it up, I've got the chain with my finger, we're going to take that and just lay it on the sprocket, on the motor sprocket. Now if you notice, the chain tensioner is not touching the chain, and we've got the spacer in place. 
Now what we need to do is before we release the chain tensioner is we're going to put all this other stuff together plus we're going to get this chain back onto the sprocket. Right now it's sitting between the disc and the uh, sprocket so what we need to do now is go underneath and spin the chain onto the sprocket. Now we're looking underneath you can see the chain hanging down. If you've got a little pick tool like this it's wonderful. You can just pick the chain up and move it around. If not a wire or you can just grab it with your fingers but you can see how easy it is to get the chain back onto the sprocket. We're just going to rotate it just a little bit and now the chain is completely back on the sprocket. So we've got this all set up now. Now we need to push the axle back in but before we do that remember you've got two spacers inside spacer outside spacer. We have to be sure that you put the right ones in the right place. If you can look inside here you can see that the axle is sticking out the other side but if we put this in here there's nothing for it to set on. So what we want to do is stick a little bit of this tab out of this axle so we can just see just a little bit of it. Just enough to hang this spacer on. So now that we've got that we're going to reach in here and we're going to put the spacer on. Now we're going to tap this through. Okay, now the axle is all the way against the wheel. What we need to do now is to get the axle into the bearing. Now what I've did is I've propped this up so it's not really on the ground and we're going to tap this through so we can get the bearing to fit through the, through the wheel center. So now what we want to do is we want to tap this through and we need to hit the bearing. So I just tap it gently. You can spin it. Notice that we've gone through that outside bearing. Now we're going to be aiming for the inside bearing. Sometimes you have to rotate it a little bit tapping. Now that you can see the tail piece is now sticking out. But of course we have to put this in. And again we don't want to pull out the strut more than we have to. Just enough to get it in there. Now we're going to tap the axle. The rest of the way through and we're done. Again be sure you use Loctite on all these nuts. Now we're going to tighten that up and we're ready to go except for the chain tensioner. Now we're going to go inside and look at the chain tensioner. While we're sitting in this area we're going to look at these two bolts here. These Allen socket heads. These Allen socket heads set this drive assembly which we'll get into more detail onto this axle. So by loosening these this tire and these components spin independently to allow you to adjust this from one side to the other. In case the chain is hitting this side or hitting that side this tensioner allows you to, sorry, these set screws allow you to adjust the width to move this chain back and forth from side to side. This is great in case that you've had an accident or hit something and have driven the side or driven this assembly sideways. This allows you to readjust it without uh, doing any more damage to your cooler. Now, as you can see, we still have the chain tensioner blocked in by the screwdriver holding it back. So all we're going to do now is we're going to release the chain and it's that easy. Now you can see the chain tension is pressing firmly against the center of the chain and you're basically done. It's all reassembled.